Hello everyone. This session is to explain how Dragon Quest works, a game currently very popular in Japan, handles millions of players, and how Cloud Spanner is essential to managing high volumes of requests. My name is Yuti, a customer engineer from Google Cloud, working with gaming industry companies in Japan. Today, I'm with Taka, who is an engineer from Corobra. The most difficult part of launching a new game is unpredictability. Once a game gets popular, the server often receives massive requests in the short term. Compute is very easy to scale. If you need more resources, you simply add more servers. But the database often becomes a bottleneck because legacy databases like MySQL are not designed to scale horizontally. So when the database is overloaded, this is what happens. For game players, I think this is the most frustrating error message. If you are a loyal player, maybe it's not a big deal. But if you are logging in for the first time, it may be your last time. Very few games can overcome this type of failure at launch. So how do game companies solve the database scaling problem? Well, in general, gaming companies need an RDBMS, and they use a technique called sharding, which splits a single database on different servers. For example, sharding can be done by players, by geolocations, or by gaming platforms. This is a broad generalization. Sharding might be a solution, but can lead to hidden costs, as you can see in this iceberg. First, maintenance costs. For example, if a single database server can handle 10,000 players, that means you need 100 servers for every million players. I think no one wants to manage hundreds of servers. Second, upgradability. Players from all over the world will play at all times of the day. Therefore, the database has to function 24-7. It is impossible to find an off-peak maintenance window that accommodates everyone. About downtime, traditional relational databases offer high availability using a failover mechanism. This means if the database server fails, it will recover, but it generates downtime. Today, Google Cloud offers many types of database, including Firestore, Cloud SQL, and third-party partner solutions, which are designed for various customer needs. Dragon Quest Work has chosen Cloud Spanner as their database, since it is the ideal, fully managed, scalable database. Cloud Spanner combines the benefit of relational database structure with non-relational horizontal scale, which means Spanner is an RDBMS. Spanner also provides horizontal scale-in, scale-out. It is fully managed and has no planned downtime. In addition, Spanner can provide up to 5.9 SLA. As I mentioned earlier, traditional databases have big hidden costs. By deploying your game on Cloud Spanner, you can dramatically reduce to these hidden costs. Spanner can scale out with one click and upgrades automatically without downtime. Data is replicated across zones, which results in high availability. But how does this translate into numbers? When Enterprise Strategy Group, which is a research firm, did a three-year TCO analysis for Spanner against other traditional and cloud databases, they found that you can save 37% of the cost compared to other cloud solutions, and 78% of cost compared to other on-premise solutions. The savings mainly come from hardware investment as well as many administrative tasks that you need to spend on to make sure your database stays up and running. Now, Let's hear from our customer, Coropla, 
and how they adapted Cloud's spanner in their game, Dragon Quest Walk. Hi, my name is Taka, and I'm a software developer for a Japanese game company called Koropura. I will take over from here and briefly talk about how we use Cloud Spanner in Dragon Quest Walk. Before I go into the details, allow me to do a brief introduction about the game. The game is called Dragon Quest Walk, and it was developed by us and published by Square Enix. The game is part of a long-running Dragon Quest series owned by Square Enix. So here are some screenshots of what the actual game looks like. The game is a merge between location-based AR and a traditional turn-based JRPG. The game is for mobile, and it's available in Japan for Android and iOS. So here are some numbers to give you an insight of how much data we process every day with Cloud Spanner. So we released this game back in September of last year. And I can't say the exact numbers, but we had a lot of users register on the first day. What I can tell you is that we had over 5 million downloads on the first week. Currently, we still have millions of monthly active users, and we process thousands of queries per second across hundreds of Spanner nodes every day. Here's the agenda for what I'm going to be talking about today. First, I'll start by talking about why we chose Spanner. Then, I will talk about how we integrated Spanner into our development. After that, I will talk about some of the challenges we faced with Spanner. So here are some of the reasons why we chose Spanner for this game. Started with the first one on the list, scaling in and out. So we used to use a self-managed MySQL to handle all our user data. And we scaled it by splitting data into horizontal shards. In our past titles, this worked well for us at first. But when the numbers of shards started to grow into double digits, we started to notice some problems with this approach. The problem arose whenever we wanted to scale. When we scaled these databases in or out, we had to scale manually. And we had to scale once every few months. We would scale out to handle the high traffic whenever we released a new feature or whenever we did a seasonal event. And then we would scale in to save costs once the hype cooled down and the traffic eased. Preparing and executing these tasks took hours and sometimes days, depending on the scale, and it was stressful and time consuming. By switching to Spanner, we were able to do this with one click, and scaling would complete within a few minutes. So that was reason number one. So the second reason we, why we chose Spanner was for its stability. In our previous titles, as I've mentioned earlier, we used a self-managed MySQL, and we used to get unexpected crashes at least once a month, mostly due to host errors. With Spanner, everything is managed, and all the problems are handled in the background. Now, we've been running this game for over six months now, and we haven't had any major downtimes. Just minor ones, and it wasn't Spanner's fault. So I could confidently say stability has been good. So that was reason number two. The third reason we chose Spanner was so we could write a more readable and maintainable code. Previously, when we had to write code for started databases, our code had to be infrastructure aware, which made it hard to read and maintain. One example of this would be something like distributed transactions, where you have to make transactions across different shards. This was hard to understand, and it was even harder to debug, especially for the parts where we had to roll back. Then there are things like replication delays, where data retrieved from the replica might not be up to date, so we had to be careful about where we read our data from. After switching to Spanner, we were able to make inserts, updates, and deletes in a single transaction, and replication delay became a non-issue because consistency is guaranteed. Now I would like to talk about how we integrated Spanner into our development. When we first decided to use Spanner, we had the feeling it was going to be a bumpy ride, since no one at the company had any experience with it, and there was very little information available online at the time. So we did some preparations to make sure that the transition from MySQL to Spanner would be smooth and painless as possible. So how do we do this? Well, first, we created a small dedicated team. And by team, I mean me and my colleague. So me and my colleague performed some basic benchmarks to check the performance. 
And once we confirmed that the performance was good, we put in some extra effort to making a dedicated driver for a PHP framework we were using called Laravel. Doing so allowed us to use pre-existing ORM, which in turn allowed us to reuse existing libraries we were using for existing games. By the way, we've uploaded the driver we wrote on GitHub, so please take a look at it if you're interested. So once the driver was written, we tested the driver by taking an existing game and replacing the MySQL driver that was used with the Spanner driver. This worked well because we get to see how it performs on real scenarios and allowed us to weed out bugs we couldn't catch with our automated tests. Doing this also helped us get familiar with the database much quicker than trying to apply it to a game from scratch. After all that, that was done, we integrated Spanner into the main game development cycle. By doing these preparations, we were able to fully integrate Spanner into our game in about two weeks. Now I'll talk about some of the challenges we faced with Spanner and also talk about how we overcame those challenges. First one on the list is interleaving. Spanner has this concept called interleaving, which is crucial for getting optimal performance out of your queries. Interleaving is a concept of having parent-child relationships between tables so that data for child tables are inserted in the same node as the parent table. This is essential because if you have a has many relation and you try to get the related rows from the children, it's much more efficient to look it up within the same node rather than looking it up across different nodes. So in, a, in order to account for this new concept, we scanned through all the existing schemas we wrote for MySQL and added definitions for interleaving for tables that had a parent-child relationship. At the same time, we made sure all the indexes that mimic the relationship in MySQL were removed since they were unnecessary when the tables are interleaved. Another thing we made sure was that all queries that scan the interleaved children included the parent IDs when doing a lookup. This was because omitting it caused Spanner to scan the entire database, which degraded performance tremendously. To be absolutely sure that the parent ID was included in all the queries, we added some code that listened to all the query events and threw a warning when the parent ID was omitted. Next item on the list is scale and hiccups. So in this game, we scale in and out fairly often based on how much traffic we're expecting for the day. Scaling out is simple since all you have to do is increase the number of nodes in the UI and wait a few minutes for it to be deployed. Scaling in, however, was a bit trickier. The, uh, the actual task is the same as scaling out, but we noticed that when we reduced the number of nodes too aggressively, there was a noticeable response delay. These delays range from a few milliseconds up to maybe something like 30 seconds. Sometimes this, is, this also caused some, the servers to choke due to too many connections being open. So we re resolved this by forcing Spanner to time out in three, sec in three seconds and return a response to the client, which asked the client to retry the request after a few seconds. In addition to that, we now try to decrease the nodes in small increments since the range of delay seems to be proportional to the number of nodes we, de we decrease. From what we can observe, if we go easy and reduce one node per five minutes or so, we manage to minimize the delay enough that no retries occurred on the client. The next item is handling bursts of access to shared data. So the game has some small sets of data which is shared across all users. These are things like item properties, and monster map coordinates. We wanted to replicate these data so access to these data could be distributed. The way to do it in Spanner was to add a column with a shard number and insert copies of the data with different shard numbers. Then what you can do is have the code select one of the shards at random and add that to the query and that will distribute the load. We thought about doing it this way but we figured it was too difficult to implement into the framework at the time. So for shared data, we decided to use a self-managed MySQL instead, 
since it can replicate and scale out easily if all you have is a small set of data. The last item on the list is handling launch day traffic. In order to talk about this, I first have to explain what a split is. Internally, Spanner divides your data into chunks called splits, where a split can move around between servers, and when there is high load on a split, it tries to slice it up and add split boundaries to distribute the load. This works well in normal scenarios where there is a gradual increase in users with gradual growth on load. But this was not what we expected to happen on launch day. What we expected to happen on launch day was thousands of users registering in a span of a few seconds. And we knew splitting wasn't going to be fast enough based on numerous launch day simulations we performed. So in order to make this work, we pre-split the database before the launch. We called this process warming up the database. The way we warmed it up was rather simple. We just forced the splits to trigger by slowly adding thousands of dummy users until it split enough to handle the launch day traffic. After the split was complete, we deleted the dummy users since the split is retained even after the users are deleted. So the method was simple, but there was one small caveat. These splits were only sustained if there was access to them. Otherwise, these splits start to merge again after around 24 hours. So we made sure to do the warm up 24 hours before the actual launch. The warm up was a tedious and time consuming task, but we're glad we did it because the launch was a great success with zero problems. Before I end, I just wanted to show you how our storage architecture looks like and briefly explain how various services are used in conjunction with Spanner. All the storage we use is lined up on the right. Going from the top, we have Spanner, which holds all the user data as you know. Our analytical data, like user action logs, is streamed to BigQuery, since BigQuery works better for scanning large sums of data. Our master data, like monsters, items, and location data, is running on multiple replicated MySQL servers, where the load is distributed using GKE service. Then we have memory store, which is used for temporary caching of frequently accessed data to ease the load on other storages. And I completely forgot to add to this, but we also use Elasticsearch to store parts of our user data so it can be used to look up names and other various attributes. That's all from me today. Thank you. Thank you, Taka. Feel free to reach out to us to find out how CloudSpanner can address challenges that you may be facing. Visit the URL to learn more. Thank you for joining today's session.